So a little while ago I made a video where I introduced a product out of Australia made by High Range Outdoors known as the Satch. And I displayed it as an everyday carrier EDC bag for urban and I use it quite often for that reason. But it occurred to me this may also make a great small satchel for, or haversack for out in the woods. It's something that can be small enough to carry everything or large enough to carry everything that I need that emptied out of my pockets, but not so large that I'm tempted to put more things in there than I should. So I have it on my hip. I've been carrying it all day. What I thought I'd do is just take my backpack off and we'll talk a little bit more about how this works as a woods carry shoulder satchel. All right, before I provide uh, an update on the satch from High Range Outdoors, I just want to mention that I'll put a link up in the corner of this video to the original review if you're in case you're interested in going back and finding out more about the bag. And of course, links will be in the video description below where you can get to the website. Uh, it was pointed out to me in the last video. I don't know if that's changed by the time I release this video, but uh, they are sold out. I don't know that I had anything to do with that or not. And the other comment was, is they were asking me about shipping from Australia, how expensive it is. And honestly, that's something I can't answer, but I will prompt the owner of uh, High Range Outdoors to maybe add some information on his website that will allow people to calculate what shipping would be, bringing it into uh, wherever you are in the world. Okay, so the Satch from High Range Outdoors. It's a small shoulder bag intended by the maker to be an EDC or everyday, everyday carry bag. Very simple in design, not a lot of pockets or doodads or things in it. And I felt that it was just a great size for carrying what I wanted or what I needed and probably a few main things that I didn't need along with me when I go on my daily walks around the neighborhood in the city. But I hadn't taken it out into the woods, and that's what I did today. And the reason I brought it out into the woods is because I felt it was going to serve a purpose that I was using something else for. So it's uh, getting into, well, it's still early summer here, late spring, early summer. But already today we're 27 degrees Celsius, and it's not even noontime yet. So it's going to be a hot day. And in the summer, I drink a lot of water, as should everybody drink a lot of water. Uh, I really like using uh, hydration bladders in the back of my backpack that have a hose that come around because I can just unclip it from my shoulder strap, drink from it, and keep on going without having to stop and take my backpack off to access a water bottle. Well, some of the backpacks that I've been carrying lately aren't outfitted for hydration bladders, like the uh, Camp Trails, the old vintage frame, external frame one that I have. Yes, I probably could put a pocket inside it and put a hydration bladder in it, but rather than do that, at least for now, what I decided to do was start carrying a water bottle in a shoulder carry, a little shoulder rig. And I've been carrying one of the, uh, I believe it's made by Nalgene. It looks like one of the GI canteens, except it's made of modern materials. And it's worked out really well for me. But I thought, you know, I could, there's, there's other things <laughs> that I carry in my pockets and things that I'm always looking for that I don't necessarily want to have to take the backpack off to get. So that's what I decided to do. To start with, carry a water bottle in this and then add those things that I'm normally in my pockets, weighing my pants down, force me to put a pair of suspenders on and seeing how that worked out. And I'll tell you, it's working out great. So very quickly, let me just show you what I've got in this. And there's room to spare. So, I won't be going through too many details on the bag itself, other than maybe the arrangements of the pockets and a couple of modifications I made to it. The reason being is you can go back to that video and you can find all the measurements and everything else about the backpack. Water bottle. I did say this will hold two Nalgene's, and it does. I was almost going to carry an Nalgene today, but it does take up space. There's room for it, but it takes away space from other things. So this is a 650 milliliter water bottle, stainless steel water bottle, that works out well. And I'm not so far away from water at any time that I can't stop and use my Sawyer Mini to refill my water bottle with clear water. So there are two, as I mentioned before, two pockets right on the front. Simple, just open drop pockets. And so I have the water bottle in one and in the other, a gift from my wife for our anniversary. A brand new monocular. I was looking for something a little bigger than the one I had. This one is 12 by 42. And uh, there's reasons why. Maybe at some point I'll talk about why a monocular and not a pair of binoculars. But I'm trying this out today, and so far it's a great, uh, great, I call it a toy, but a great tool for use here in the woods. 
just behind that I'm carrying a folding knife and this is the Manly Peak two-handed folding knife that I've reviewed separately. The one where I added the thumb stop, stop to the blade to make it easier to open because otherwise it would take two hands to open. Still takes two hands to close safely. Um, I'm carrying this, I have a large, my Tureva Scrama as a large cutting tool in my backpack. So for most of the things that I'm gonna be doing while I'm moving through the woods, this is probably all I really need to have on me. I, there was other ones I could have chosen. I could have chosen a multi-tool or a Swiss Army knife or something else, but that's what I chose for today. So in behind that, few things, small piece of cordage, I usually have that. Snack for the trail this time, the Wild Zora Apple and Pork Meat Bar. Great, great tasting food. The ever-present bandana. Gotta have the bandana with me at all times. Oh yeah, this is the little headscarf that came from Jeep at Econel Challenge. The amazing wilderness headscarf. I do have a separate review on that if you're interested. I'll put that link, I guess, at the bottom in the video description. Uh, a lip protector, sun, sunscreen lip protector. Oh yeah, reading glasses, got to have the reading glasses. These are things that would be in my pockets that it really makes it a lot easier to, to wear the pants without too much weighted down. Cell phone, which also acts as my camera. Now in here I have a couple of things, but primarily I have a notebook, but I also have notes for videos that I hope to make today. And it's in just a little waterproof uh, bag that uh, I can keep it in. Um, yeah, that's all it is, just a notebook and some notes for today. I think there's one more thing in here. Oh yeah, essential, my compass. So my compass would normally ride in my pocket, hooked to my belt, so right now it's just riding in here. So that's all I have in here. There's room for more, but that's the whole point. I'm trying to avoid the, the um, temptation to put more in here. So what did I do to modify the bag to make it a little easier to use? Well, two things. In the original review, I mentioned that there was a front pocket or main pocket and a back pocket. And the main pocket is the one that's gusseted at the bottom that allows it, when it's full, to stand upright without falling over. And right behind that is another pocket. My thought on that second pocket, the one in behind, is that I had wished there was some way of closing it over, maybe with a zipper or with a piece of Velcro or something else. Actually, one of my viewers su suggested, why even bother? Just have, you know, build it without that pocket. There's really no need. It, it is nice to have a second pocket, but you've got two in the front anyway. So those two pockets in the main pocket, what else do you really need? <coughs> Removing that back flap not only removes the issue of my hand going into it unintentionally, but it, maybe it lightens the weight up and maybe reduces the cost a little bit. But what did I do? I just added a piece of Velcro right in the center. It keeps the pocket closed so that it's, I'm not reaching into it unintentionally. And the other thing I did, I also mentioned in the video, was to add a D-ring. I'll get a little closer and show you both. So there's the D-ring, very, very simple. Just a piece of nylon webbing, small plastic D-ring on it that I can hook a pair of keys on. And this today, I had my, my uh, compass attached to it, but I could put keys or hook a little multi-tool or whatever else you want on there. In the city, it'd likely be my keys. And then the Velcro that holds the back pocket shut. Not, not, you know, really big piece, just a small piece, just to keep it from opening up unintentionally and then I can reach into the main pocket. Okay, that's pretty much all I have on the satch updated for use in the woods. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you have any questions about the satch, then uh, please put them in the uh, comments section below. If you want to find out more about the details on the satch, I'll refer you back to that original video. I'll probably put it at the end of this video as well as the link in the beginning. And in the show notes below, of course, so that you can find it there if that's where you want to look. But that's all I have. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the show notes below. But until I see you again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.